Hello, History of Medicine students. This is Professor Bowen here with some comments on our week 13 discussion of germ theory, bacteriology, and the so-called laboratory revolution in late 19th, early 20th century Western medicine. As you know, in our conversations on these things, we made use of a methodological perspective that is sometimes called history from the bottom up. We wanted to know about the patient's perspective on all of the new forms of medical knowledge and practice that came out of this important era, and to do so, we made use of a very interesting source base, clinical case files, or patient records. We all had lots of interesting opinions to share regarding the benefits and limitations of these kinds of medical texts, and I just wanted to take a few minutes to address some of the points made in our posts. To start, let me say that uh, many of us were of the opinion, interestingly, that patient records are really not that valuable or helpful and are at best of limited value. In defense of this position, we put forward a number of different arguments. Some contended that when it comes to questions of medical diagnosis and therapy, patient records are not that helpful because patients, as members of the lay community, are generally not very well informed about these things, that is, diagnosis and therapy. This is an intriguing idea, uh, but in considering it, we should first recall that patients' records are things produced by doctors. They're giving us doctors' opinions, doctors' judgments, information about what doctors did in terms of diagnosis and therapy. Even though they are about patients, they are written by doctors, and as such, they offer a window onto doctors' mentality. Thus, the claim that they are one-sided that they only give us the patient's view of things is misguided. Remember that these are produced by physicians and that one of their chief benefits is that they allow us to compare what doctors wrote with what doctors actually did in terms of medical practice. To the extent that these sources contain or express a quote-unquote patient's voice, they only do so in a limited, filtered, mediated way. So these are doctor's records, despite the fact that we call them patient records. Be mindful of that, first of all. Next, secondly, some of us were of the opinion that patient records are of limited value because when it comes to the history of medicine, doctors are the only truly important people. They're the only ones worthy of study. This is incorrect. The history of medicine is not just about what doctors did or what doctors said. Remember that in studying the history of medicine, one of the things that we are most interested in is the illness experience, what it's like to have particular diseases, and this experience is not always something that involves physicians. If we limited ourselves just to doctors and privileged them in our accounts, we'd only be getting a very partial, incomplete picture. The healer's perspective is, of course, an important one, but we shouldn't privilege that over the perspective of sick people. To say that doctors are the only ones who are really important is an incredibly biased point of view. Just because someone lacks a medical degree doesn't mean that their opinions and experiences are unimportant. Indeed, one of the joys of the history of medicine is that it allows us to learn about literally everyone, both as individuals and as entire populations. Without bringing the sick onto the historical stage, our accounts will be incomplete and hopelessly one-sided. Let's remember that. So part of the reason, I think, that we seem to believe that doctors are more important than everyone else is because we assume that we should privilege those with medical knowledge. 
but there's really not a good reason to do this. Remember, when doing academic medical history, we're not concerned with how quote-unquote correct people's ideas were. We're not concerned with how accurately or how successfully they diagnosed or treated someone's illness. Some of us dismissed patient records because they contained testimonies from patients that we said might not always be credible. Of course, patients might forget things, and they may also lie. But this is kind of beside the point. And also, let's acknowledge the fact that doctors are people too. We shouldn't assume that they are always credible, or that they're a better source of information about a person's illness just because they're doctors. These are dubious assumptions. Again, doctors are people. They lie. They forget. They omit. They are sometimes not credible. Don't elevate doctors over patients and just assume because they have an MD, they are somehow better sources of knowledge. Again, that's biased. Also, remember that we are not using the retrospectoscope here. Our job is not to determine what really happened in the clinic, or the hospital, or the doctor's office. In response to the argument that patient records are problematic because people might misinterpret their conditions, I would say this. It's only problematic if we assume that it's our job to diagnose these patients and find out what diseases they really had. But that's not actually our job. We don't need to worry about doctors or patients misinterpreting things. We don't care about right or wrong. We just don't care. Instead, We care about figuring out what shaped people's inquiries, their experiences, what influenced the process of diagnosing or treating, and what the results of this were. Just because a doctor was wrong doesn't mean that this is bad data. There is no such thing as bad data. In fact, because when it comes to primary sources, objectivity is not something we care about. We try to be objective in our analyses of that data, but as I've said before, When it comes to our source material, we actually love subjectivity. It's the thing we study. It's the thing we try to reason out. It's the thing we continually puzzle over. It fascinates us. And also, because there's no such thing as an unbiased source, we really don't have any other choice but to wrestle with these things. So when it comes to primary sources, I guess what I'm saying is that objectivity is a lie. Now, I don't know if I'm going to convince you of everything I've said about this in just one video. But patient-centered medical histories are not a mistake. They're wonderful. They're miraculous. They're an incredibly valuable contribution to historical knowledge. They're to be embraced, not rejected. Indeed, since so much of the history of medicine has been conducted in the old-style great doctor's tradition, patient histories are something that we are sorely in need of more of. We need more of these, and we need to support scholars who are trying to move beyond the great doctor's traditions. And patient records are, despite some of their flaws, one of the best ways that we can do this. All right, I know I've said a lot. Um, I think that's everything that I wanted to address as far as our week 13 comments go. Thank you for watching this video and listening to my feedback. If you have further questions or if you do want to debate any of this further, I'm very open to doing so. Just get in touch with me, however works best for you. And I'm really looking forward to this week's coming discussion. So see you all soon in the discussion board over email or chat. Uh, I'm looking forward to finishing up the semester strong with all of you. So great. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.